Bob, can you unmute yourself on the little red microphone? There you go. Hi, Bob. Hi, everyone. It's Vicki. Hey, Vicki. <laughs> Did I see Leslie on here a second ago? See who? Leslie? Uh, she. So, <laughs> anybody on? Uh, yeah, came and went. This is Bob. Hi, Bob. Leslie Rollins did call in. I saw her briefly, but I don't know where she's at now. She was driving her car, she said. Oh, okay. She wanted to introduce herself tonight. Okay. Uh, Eric and Richard are here in the room with me. Um, online, we have Bob and Vicki for the quorum. I haven't heard from Chris Heal. I did hear from Brian Jones, who said that he had 80 baby goats born over the weekend, so he's a little busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who'd you say was who'd you say was there with you, Ron? I thought you said Eric and Brian, no? No, Eric and Richard. Oh, Richard, hi. Hi. Yeah, so we're we're doing a conversion of to Zoom this meeting, which is our trial, and it's proving out to be everything like a trial. We're, it's a mistrial. <laughs> it's a mistrial. We had uh, other than switching device uh, software, we also are upgrading the wiring in the building. And whoever came in over the weekend for the wiring upgrade upset the the public access channel wiring. So I have to work through my laptop, which is why you don't see anybody tonight. Uh, trust, we're here though. The three of us are here and we're, 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 we can all hear you. So just speak up just a little bit and we'll should be fine. So if, if Leslie calls back, Bob, she just needs a couple seconds to say hi. And, and yep. I don't, I see one person on the iPhone that's not identified. I don't, maybe that's Leslie. It says, it looks like they hung up uh, by the symbol I have on the right. I think they're just uh, muted, Bob. Hope, like, maybe if you can mute on a phone, I don't know. Okay. So, yeah, you, yeah. okay thank you, Allison. <laughs> Sorry, we have uh, Chris Peel just called in and Milford just called in. So we have a bunch online now. Okay. So, um, and Leslie had called in and then dropped out because of the earlier technical things. Yes, no, Ron? I, I, well, she told me that she was calling in at six and then if she was having drop, trouble or couldn't wait a few minutes, she might have disconnected. So we'll see yeah. if she can back. Okay. But so, we have, for the planning commission, we have you and Chris and Vicki online and we have Eric and Richard uh, here in, in the meeting room. Okay, it, it, um, is Mary Waltz on? I see your name, but I, I'm I mute. I'm here. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Okay. So, and, Mary, and just so you don't have to hang for the whole thing, do you want to? Um, uh, yeah, bring up I'm that, happy to bring up that issue, and we can. Yeah. You know. Hold on. It's something we'll have to look at down the road, but at least we can get it started. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I see if I can put my camera on, if that's better. My, my internet's not great. Um, yeah, the thing I wanted to actually raise tonight was maybe not what you were thinking, Bob, which I've done some further reflecting on about the idea of a conservation commission. But what I wanted to um, talk, I'm, I'm super enthusiastic about doing that, but I recognize that's gonna take some time and, and we need to set the stage for that. So um, I'd, I'd love to talk about that with anybody on the planning commission who's interested in it. Um, but tonight, actually, what I wanted to talk to you about is um, two things, actually, in terms of your work that you're doing to amend the bylaws or rewrite the bylaws. And I'm sorry, I don't really know what the timing of your work is. I don't know how far along you are, but um, there are two things that have come to my attention. First is, we have an application for um, expanding uh, an operation at a gravel pit on Garfield Road. And so that caused us to look at section, uh, I forget what it is, 713, I think, um, which is the gravel extraction bylaw. And it's sort of 
okay. It's sort of general and not, um, you know, not horrible, but it's actually got some things that are not very clean and not very easy to understand. And it could use some work. And I don't know if that's something you guys would be willing to entertain as part of this process. And if you would, then I would, you know, happily get into a bit of the detail of that at some point. And um, I should say that I, I, I spent a little bit of time to see if there's some kind of model bylaw for gravel pits and it was not an easy Google answer. So I think the answer is probably no. And, um, but I'd happily look into it if, if that was something you guys are interested in. So there, yeah, so period, that's question number one. Um, should I go to question number two? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure we, on the bylaws, I'm not sure we have time if we are, we're getting ready to push these to a public hearing, you know, um, so, but anyway, well, I, we're not, I don't think it's I mean, a it's super complicated issue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's something we should look at, but believe me, everything's a complicated issue. Well, We've been yeah. on some of these things since last February. So, yeah, okay. Um, well, would it be Here. helpful if I, Yep. Mary, before you start, I just wanted to follow up with what Bob said. Uh, today, the town got notice that we received the bylaw modernization grant with the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Uh -huh. That's about a $9,000 project where the Planning Commission was at a point of deciding whether or not to let that sub study go forward which is looking at what Hyde Park has done within its bylaw that constrains new housing development or affordable housing and how the town's bylaw could be improved to uh, remove those constraints and that's a consultant that we'd hire that would look at it and present findings and recommendations back to the commission that would be incorporated into the bylaw so that potentially could be done within a six month window. Uh, but again, that gets to the timing issue that um, Bob was trying, we were trying to get this off our plate and close out the work that we had done for the last year. Uh, but you have a choice to make whether you wanna keep it open for this supplemental study and recommendations on housing and community development issues that um, a lot of people complain about zoning being a constraint this would try to identify those things and get get recommendations to the planning commission to look at to add to your bylaw amendment list or or you wait and then do another bylaw amendment you know again in 23 or something so ron so, this is vicky do we have a deadline for the bylaw of revisions at this point yeah they they give eight, they give 18 months on the grant and if you end up adopting the new bylaw after you look at the recommendations then they waive the grant match if you adopt the recommendations after the grant term then you have to pay the 10 percent. so like an incentive from the state to act on what you find out in the study so what about our regardless of the grant did we have a deadline or what was our deadline i guess i should ask the, the grant that I'm talking about has 18 months. Of, the same thing he's saying for the other amendments that we've been looking at. Oh, there, there. No, there's, the amendments are your, are in-house. There's nothing fueling okay. your current round. The new grant has 18 months to adopt. Okay. If you want to waive the uh, match. Mm -hmm. So we could, we could extend this bylaw change out and add the, um, possible zoning changes that would help with affordable housing, et cetera. And, um, and Mary's com and Mary's sub submit. Yeah, and the gravel, uh, and cleaning yeah. up the gravel pit. <laughs> so, um, you know, and the, and the reason obviously Mary's been in the middle of all those DRB meetings about the gravel pit. So, you know, that's when you start seeing problems with the verbiage, you know, when you're like, oh yeah, this doesn't work, you know, <laughs> so. Um, well, I, I can I guess... leave. I can leave that with you guys to discuss, and and I'll 
find out, you know, how you want to handle that. Maybe in the meantime, what I could do is just write a short note um, about some simple changes that would clarify it, which isn't necessarily all you would want to do if you were really fixing it up. I, I don't know. I'm not an expert on gravel pit bylaws, but at, I could try and get something on paper that might be sensible if you guys do decide to extend. Of course, if you decided to extend, then perhaps we could get a little more expertise on it. Yeah, and, um, and we're always adjusting, Mary. You know, in other words, as as um, issues come into Ron, we see things that logically do need to be adjusted. Not every complaint gets, you know, we're not quite like Morrisville where, oh, you built that in the wrong place. That's okay. You know, but uh, <laughs> anyway, believe me, yeah. that's happened in Morrisville lately. But um, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'd say send us, send us your, you know, draft on that and we'll put it on the list, you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, it, it, yeah, great. Thank you. And then the other thing is that you, you know, um, from last year that I've got myself kind of interested in invasive species and in particular Japanese knotweed. And I was just wondering if, and this is a bit more general, but wondering if there was some scope for putting uh, something in the, the performance standards section of the bylaw that, um, that said something about uh, invasive plant species and what specifically that could be. It might be something as simple. I mean, I've had a cursory discussion with Ron about this, but something as simple as um, just incorporating the state regulations. Um, I've asked Seth Jensen to get me the language that they use in uh, Vermont Agency of Transportation projects, see what that says, but just something in there that says, you know, um, that recognizes the concept of invasive plant species and how we ought to be sensitive about that in the way we go about developing. What specifically we'd say, I don't know, but um, if you're extending the bylaws and if you'd be willing to entertain that idea as something that goes into the that section of the bylaws, then I would like to put something before you on that as well. Okay, we'll we'll let you know if we're extending you know, beyond, you know, it sounds like we might be because of this, this, um, um, you know, planning grant that we, we obviously, I didn't even know we got that. So. Uh, well, unless good news. Ron, yeah, that was, it was a fairly new ask. So, but yeah. Um, all right. Well, good. Okay. I appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. I'll sign off now. Okay. okay. See you later. Thanks a lot. Good night. Good night. So uh, back to um, Leslie hasn't called back in. So let's jump into number three. Um, Bob, do you see the hand raised on your screen? No. Oh, you don't see Allison? No, I don't. You don't see Allison. I see Allison, huh? That's, all I see is myself, which I don't particularly want to see. And and a GMA TV. I think if you change, if you, yeah, if you change your in your top right of your screen, you can change it to gallery. You see where it says view in your top right? You have to scroll over there with your mouse. Mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 Very top right da, da, da. corner should have a view, and then it has some choices when you left click. Probably different on a Mac, you know. Oh, the Mac. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to confuse you. I have no yeah, idea. Wait a minute. <laughs> it, I, it might be on the it might be on the bottom here. I'm on a Mac and I can say hello and uh, the top yeah. right where it does save you and it has kind of like a dial pad in a way. It's like a you can click on it and then you see either speaker or gallery or full screen. Interesting because no, it doesn't isn't that well. weird. Oh, hmm. wait, wait a minute. Here's a, you know, there's a full screen that makes it even crazier. Um, okay. Anyway, we can, we can, I can function like this. Um, I could call Maxine. She's a Zoom expert, but. Uh, we'll have a training session, Bob, I think is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. I did one this afternoon. I had Maxine send me a, 
you know, send me a link. I got on it and it worked fine. Anyway. Um, so Allison wanted two seconds at your public comment. Okay. Jump yes. in, Allison. Oh, great. Well, I hope you can see me. Maybe if it's, can you see me now, Bob? I can, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can. Hi. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, because that's because I'm speaking probably. Hi to everyone. Um, really, thank you for the few minutes here. I am Allison Link, and I'm the Policy and Community Outreach Coordinator from Healthy Lamoille Valley. Uh, for those who don't know, Healthy Lamoille Valley is our local um, substance prevention coalition. So we really focus on reducing youth substance misuse, and that's our focus. But what we do is we focus on risk factors in the community and protective factors in the community that might lead to youth substance misuse. And we say misuse because all youth use is misuse. Um, and so when we, we think about the types of things that we do, and we've worked very well with Hyde Park in the past, which has been so great, like Hyde Park has um, a healthy, um, healthy community policy and we've done other initiatives and signage and whatnot but specifically with the risk and protective factors i just want to talk to the planning commission just to plant some seeds tonight um, just quickly about community level risk factors that right now in the middle of your conversation you may look at now or down the line in your town plan or whatnot so risk factors that are on the community level for our youth include community laws and norms that gear towards substances, uh, geared towards um, also when, when access and availability of substances um, for is, is increased, youth are more likely to use. And all of that leads to youth using at an earlier age. And when that happens, um, youth are four or five, six more times likely to be dependent later in life. And I have some resources that I dropped off at Ron um, at, in the office today, but I'll just put in the chat and maybe Ron, you can send in the minutes. Like here, for example, is our website, just to see a little bit more, but we also have a community planning toolkit that you can access right off the website. And I'll put the link in there too for those. Um, I'll put the, that in for those who are online. Um, here is the community planning toolkit. Uh, it really is a guide that we originally worked with LCPC on years ago, um, that this is another version of it to help towns and municipalities really look at what are the policy level zoning related issues, performance measures, other pieces that might that are evidence based that might help reduce substance um, misuse of youth in the community. and. Um, and we also, in particular, one of the reasons why I bring up this whole piece about visioning and thinking about what um, you can do to impact uh, you know, youth substance misuse, I wanted to share your own um, Hyde Park Healthy Community Policy. Um, I know it's like a lot of information and I know Ron, you have this all on your, on your website, um, but the cannabis uh, piece is very relevant right now. Uh, retail cannabis and integrated licenses, uh, you know, towns can opt in, but all the other licenses are um, issued, will be issued by the state. And so there are things that local towns can do in advance uh, and or alongside the, um, you know, this rollout of uh, retail cannabis market. And I just wanted to make folks aware of some of the resources that we have. Um, already that we've created, we've been sharing in the community uh, about process and you know community engagement on what folks in the community want, all different stakeholders. But then really getting to you know what you're talking about with um, bylaws and zoning and whatnot. You know, even thinking about not just looking at cannabis, but looking at cannabis, tobacco, alcohol, like the whole healthy community policy and things that are in your own policy. How you might take that to the next level related to maybe buffer zones, um, outlet density, uh, looking at um, uh, site, um, like site plan review, uh, advertising, net neutral advertising. Uh, even we've talked about when I was hearing the woman before I talk about performance measures uh, in our recent municipal municipal uh, round table, there was some folks, including law enforcement, talking about odor, nuisance, um, 
odor nuisance uh, related um, performance measures or how that related to maybe zoning the buf buffer zones. So there were so many things to consider and why, why do we consider these things? It's really about like youth in the Moyle Valley are using too much, too often, um, too frequently. And um, we want to really try to address the norms in the community, not trying to necessarily can't tell people how to vote, but municipalities can take ownership. And it's such a powerful thing to take ownership over health policy and what the potential impact is on um, our youth and our communities and the potential impact beyond youth on different systems and whatnot. So I just wanted to send some resources over, plant some seeds. Um, for y'all to think about and to bring you back to that healthy community policy um, that I think, what was it, 2018, 2019, um, that was passed and see how to really up, update that, um, you know, in this next round and also then gearing towards, I know when your town plan will come uh, in the next couple of years. So I don't know if there are any questions, but I, so I'm not a lawyer, but I've become an expert on Act 164 and retail cannabis and, and, uh, and we also have um, an event coming up on Thursday, if folks are interested, um, that's teens and cannabis, a look at the data into the impacts of legal retail markets on youth. So this is, um, these are the seeds that I'm planting for you to consider. Okay, that's good. And um, thank you for that data. Um, I guess we have, we, we have one, we have, don't have a lot going on, but I noticed Ron made a mention of um, somebody with a license uh, actually down the road for me. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, well, I, so, make, hi, hi, Bob, this is Vicki. So, I have a question, and maybe this is more of a Ron question, but I know the state is trying to push it towards smaller growers. And maybe that's a whole different conversation that we have about bylaws but Allison thank you because I have I have a 16 year old nephew that <laughs> I get it and I was like yeah yeah so thank you but yeah maybe the yeah, conversation can, is more about you know I can add to that Vicki because um so licenses actually Ron and I had a conversation with the, about this earlier as well so the state is gear, go, gearing towards um smaller growers and you know it's just thinking about people who are already um who are already working on their uh, construction now, they don't have licenses and they may or may not get them and they may not be in accordance with the laws because the rulemaking has not completely been set yet and the legislature still will need to vote on the recommendations from the Cannabis Control Board from the state. So for example, if the facility that's right now, um, you know, developing, they don't have an official license from the state yet. So those won't be even issued until it's supposed to be at, at the earliest is May. And is that, that for is anybody, to, Allison? Is that for anybody commercial? That, I mean, large or small? That, that's for that's for growers. Okay, the, growers. Yeah. We retail is different. Retail will not be well. Retail integrate. I can get into the details or not, but retail yeah. integrated licenses will start in May. But that only can go towards the current medical um, cannabis. Oh, okay. Be because those are the first ones who will be able to transition to retail. Now, the retail licenses, though, the first ones will be issued the earliest in October. So we're so to back up, you know, the the um, the growing licenses will start um, in May mm -hmm. to be issued. However, it's true that they're looking at very small growers, and it's true, and you know, if this property that's the construction's going on is for more you know more than that there's there's going to be no um that's not taken into account by the state if they're going to give the licenses or not if it's already in motion like we just want to make sure that you know towns as well as the folks who are applying for licenses know that it's no guarantee that the state is going to issue them a license so then the, and the towns don't have say over if the those folks will get licenses the towns only have say by australian ballot vote Okay. if there will be retail and integrated licenses in that town so you know there, and the rulemaking again has is not set so you know we're, we're taking an approach and we have on one of our websites for municipal leaders that i'll put in the chat in a minute um we have uh 
a document that I also gave to Ron and I'll put in the chat now, but it's really about a process that whether it's the planning commission or others who, you know, start to create um, like a task force, like Hardwick, for example, um, they have now a, a task force on cannabis to see what is it going to mean, what might it mean for their town and how can they inform voters and, and inform the town on you know, and, and on what that's going to be about, or other towns eventually can have like a cannabis control commission, which it kind of mm -hmm. might function like um, like the, the the liquor license of the select board. But um, you know, every town's taking it a little different, and I know it hasn't come up because Hyde Park hasn't been petitioned. Um, for retail integrated licenses and is not putting it on the agenda themselves or yourselves but you know who knows when things might kind of come up and like how to just be prepared for what's coming and to have a sense of what the possibilities are and especially for the for you know for your committee that you know it could it's a, it's about you know what are the, what bylaws might change or or zoning or how to look at a, the healthy community policy and say well what does this mean to us now with all of these substances including um, you know including cannabis and the cannabis one really um, at this point there's been a lot of change and I'm happy to give whatever assistance in supporting that and and Seth also we're all well Seth Jensen and I are also back and forth quite a bit on uh, supporting um, towns on these types of initiatives so well, Seth and I can also work together to help support you whatever um you know whatever grows out of this initial you know seed planting okay thank you allison so this is totally separate from hemp obviously so we've dealt with our cbd and hemp and this would be a separate yeah thank you for your work by the way <laughs> oh thank you it's so great to be here sorry to take so much time but i'm really happy to follow up individually or however you know if people want more information reach out or a small group and you know happy to support um your commission and hyde park always great to work with you guys thank you allison so thank you any other questions for allison i guess you can go on with your evening <laughs> Okay, thank you. So, um, back to matching the view shed map with the um, verbiage. Are we good to go there? Has everyone got a copy of that? <clears throat> Uh, yes, this is Milford. Um, can you see me, uh, Bob? I can, yep. Okay. Yep, we're good. So I wanted to just weigh in and thank uh, thank you, um, thank Alec and Seth. Um, I think that I'm Ron. Um, the reworking of um, under 5.1, uh, the, the um, project classification criteria I think that all those that the rewrite of that is excellent. I th it, it's it's um, sp spot on. Oh, um, good. Thanks, we'll thanks. Rich, we'll see if Richard agrees. He he started me down that track, so we'll we'll hear from him next, Milford. But thank you. Yeah, I think I I read this through um, as if I were a landowner, or as if I was an applicant, or if I was a consultant in the room um, trying to use. Uh, Use the map, the new map, in conjunction with uh, this this rewrite. Um, thank you also for the inclusion under design features. You in blue there, applicants are encouraged to review and consider the visual guide to accompany the town of Hyde Park a Green River Reservoir Viewshed Overlay District Zoning Bylaws Republication. Et cetera, et cetera. I would um, propose that that um, move up um, instead of if it, it does refer to um, um, to overall screening as well as design features to harmonize with the landscape. You can put it up here. Um, um, and I think uh, Ron, um, uh, I would almost move it up to. Um, below um, where where it says the guidelines are not regulatory or intended to be instructive in nature. 
they suggest a variety of means by which the applicant might comply with the standards. Yes. The options for compliance are not limited to the guidelines listed. The applicant can use the guidelines as an aid in the design process. I, I would propose that uh, what is blue a little further down get moved to right there. Yeah, that's easy to do. Yeah, it looks, I mean, that looks like it's fine. And I think it might be, I think you're right. It's like a better, a better spot there. And maybe, um, I don't know, just from the world of bullet points that I like to work in, maybe it should be its own paragraph too, you know? Yeah, yeah, I would, I would, yeah, I would, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, that'll just get your attention as a starting point, you know, because yeah. people just don't read the whole thing. <laughs> so well, I think I think what what your your goal here is to create an easy an easier path for uh, Ron to direct to properly direct an applicant. Yes. Yes. Right? And, and uh, yeah, uh, it's and and really nothing has changed. We've just cleaned up. The relationship of the new map, especially, which has changed, but to the kind of weak verbiage we had before, that was a little confusing. So, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, 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 um, one hundred percent behind the effort that you all have put into this, and what Seth and Alec have done. Um, and <clears throat> Mary Walls is. Uh, Okay, um, our presentation notwithstanding, um, um, I would be in favor if I were to vote or click my heels for both of you moving forward with uh, this, these um, revisions, um, uh, bringing them to the town for consideration sooner than later. Yeah, I think with, I think I, I agree with it just because this if we let it sit, if it's tabled too long, then we're we're rehashing too many things that we think we've already done. And right. I feel like we have done pretty much ninety-five percent of what we started out to do last year, not just with the Green River, but with the whole revision, cleaning up some inequities and some things just related to new federal rulings, which we have no choice over, you know? Um, but, and we're always changing the zoning. So it gives us something to do, Milford, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, Milford, this is Vicki. I would just ask, because I totally agree, but how do we address when people say, well, what about what's going on with Morseville Water and Light? Uh, Morsel, I, I would say, Vicki, your answer to Morsel Water and Light is um, Morsel and Light is its own, its own entity. It, yep. it, it's not, it's a Morsel Water and Light's uh, um, position right now. Um, uh, something's going to be resolved, Vicki. <laughs> good. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, and, and, I, and I think. I think that people who own property in the in the view shed uh, zone um, would be advised to pay attention to what's going on and what their liability is. I do not think that this is the time to relax um, our standards and the the goal of the overlay district. Um, I. I'm pretty confident that there's an application that's going to be coming in sometime this spring. Oh, okay, good to know. Thank you, Milford. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So um, everyone else had a chance to review those um, uh, the verbiage changes and any questions. I'll take that as a no. Are we? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Richard. Yeah, Rich, Richard just said they they look good to him as well. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you, Richard. Do are we voting on this or just adding it to the rest of the 
changes to be looked at next by a um, uh, a hearing. Ron. Yeah, the, uh, that was one of my questions before. The uh, right now we've been going along the line of adding and subtracting to the list. Uh, we haven't talked about a date or you know anything particular. Uh, we also haven't talked about breaking it up into two amendments, one that goes quicker and one that waits for that um, study to come out. So mm -hmm. I guess like you have those kind of a three options. You know, you could go with what you have now and be done with it and then just see what happens down the road and maybe pick it up again next, you know, next year as things evolve or you can keep it open and add that study recommendations or throw all the recommendations out. You still have to decide that, but you give time for that to happen. We could, we could fast track that to limit the time you know, to get the recommendations. Uh, and, you know, putting forth just the GRR, it's, it's not a, it's not a complicated process, but I think just the GRR is, is kind of, it's important, but I don't know if, I don't know how to deal with the, the threat of new development and what would happen if something came in. Right now we're using the old map and it it doesn't have the breakdown in the in the bylaw. You know, the 2020 bylaw doesn't have those different categories. It just has one big overlay. So everything gets thrown to the DRB right now. Um, whether or not you want to get a kind of a legal opinion about the risk of the GRR potentially, because the map and the text don't match, that might change your mind about maybe spinning off the GRR to a special hearing and get that one thing done and then push everything else out to a second hearing down, you know, six months or eight months down the road. You kind of have a bunch of options here. I just, I can't do the risk assessment on the GRR without. Right. Well, I mean, other than a couple little things, I thought we were pretty much done and we have some other potential. There were a couple things that really, if we're going to do the GRR, that should go along with it because we're outside of um, federal court rulings on a couple things, you know, uh, yeah. that were in there. You know, the adult entertainment thing, which we say no to, but we can't, and and the thing about signs um, related to religious. Yep. You know, I mean. Yeah, the content issue, yeah. The, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. I thought we were at a point to move this whole thing, you know, whole thing to a public hearing soon. And, and just, then we have a smaller project in my mind of jumping on to adjusting zoning rules to somewhat help development of workforce housing and and you know low income housing you know based on the fact that some of our zones are could be smaller you know like a neck like a next round yeah, yeah like the next round to go along with that grant you know and there's no reason we can't start that next spring mm -hmm. i mean we should we should have this thing through hearings and a yes or no out of the selectmen by spring i would think but maybe i'm crazy you know you know i mean they're probably busy with everything related to upcoming um town meeting stuff and budgets etc but yeah uh, I mean, you, you have the the statutory adoption process which you know requires a you know publication in the newspaper and a hearing then you have so many you know the select board has the same process to go through so you and then there's a an effective date after the select board is, uh, approves it. I think it's 20 days. So you have a string of, you know, maybe two months if you're really quick about it to get all that stuff done. Mm -hmm. But right now you have a couple outstanding things. You know, if you push that, the gravel pit and the housing and invasives, and I think firewood was getting close, but I don't know if I have the final language yet on that, whether you're going to allow you know, 10 cords, 20 cords, offsite, onsite stuff. Right, right. That was one of the things on the back of my mind was the 
we get, that that wasn't satisfying what we were after at this point. Um, but yeah, I know, I know. It's just it just seems like this has been dragging, and um, it it just seems like we could spend a whole year, and we just spent a year, you know. And and what's going to happen is five of the things we've decided on. <laughs> something will something will change on them you know but uh, it, the zoning's not supposed to be that fluid you know we, we should get it in writing and then change it if we have to again you know i don't i don't know um well, there's, there's I'm, not I'm looking i'm looking to see who else agrees or disagrees at this point yeah you can you have to uh, do i think i think that if you keep kicking the can down the road and it sounds to me like you would really like to get something done with that Buford thing. It seems to be on the top list for you. But all the other ones we worked on, if we put it off, what good is it going to do? We're going to forget everything we did already, really. Yeah, I missed some of that. Sorry, Eric. Bad sound. Yeah, he, just, he basically said that if you're, you know, if we're close on some stuff, let's get it done. And the rest of the stuff we can have is a, basically a round two, you know, wait for that report right. to come and then start yeah. another. Process. But you have to decide what you want to make sure gets done first. Right. So, That's kind of where I'm come, stepping in there. Anyone yeah. else got an opinion? Um, I mean, you're going to want to be kind of careful if you... If you decide to just pick the viewshed district to get done all by itself, um, because like I said before, it's pretty obvious to me that there's other stuff going on with that deal more than the way you're making it sound with just the math. And you're kind of admitting there is by saying it's such a rush to do it before, as once again, Milford Cushman mentioned again about something that's going to be coming in right off. And that if somebody uses these tapes of these meetings, that's pretty much pointing that you're picking out a specific piece of property to put some extra rules on. So you you know you might want to think about that a little bit. Well, I I, I don't think we're adding anything. We've yeah. actually made that zone easier to develop. That's my that's what a lawyer may key on is my point. You know. It just seems like that's a big rush when it's not to me, but it is to you. So I don't, I don't get that, you know. Well, I don't. I'm. Uh, this is Bob. I'm not in a rush to do it. I just think we've done what we needed to do to correct correct the language and the map, and we've got a better product to put out there for people to work with. It's in everything I read there makes developing in that zone a little easier for people to understand and a little easier for them to do. And agreed, you know, there's, you know, somebody can always say we're picking on them by changing it, but I think we're changing it for the, it's easier and a little bit better. And, and right now, the old verbiage and the map don't work well together. So there where, you know, there's a potential of somebody saying, I want to do A, and the DRB says, no, you got to do B, and then it turns into a lawsuit, you know. But I think that's where some of that came from, right, Ron? Well, you're, you're supposed to have text that matches the map. That's correct. Exactly. So the, yeah. So that's... The main reason for this amendment anything else that gets added to that there's you know there there's a bunch of other word changes and corrections that we already have agreed to that could be added to that and then you you spin that off to a a quick one that i can't give you a definite date on that report i'm thinking that we could get it done in six months if we put a high priority on it um, if an application comes through for grr uh, we would treat it the same way, which is send them to the DRB and incorporate those guidelines, which is what we've been doing any 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 time since that map got changed. Mm -hmm. So I I just 
I, I don't know if there's a, ga a gaping hole in there because of the mismatch, you know, between the text and the map. That's kind of a legal question. I can't answer that. If somebody would come in and say, I want my house right here, but because you have a technical difficulty, they, the overlay doesn't apply to me. That, yeah, that, I, think, I think things like that are how much money somebody wants to spend with lawyers and they'll, you know, and the town will probably say, we, we give up after X amount of money, you know? I mean, I've, I've seen that happen in other jurisdictions where someone says, I'm gonna do what I want. How much money do you wanna to spend to fight me? You know, and yeah, everyone I mean, that, else. Yeah, you know. and with the adult entertainment stuff too right now, that's the same problem. You know, it's like if yeah. somebody wants to, they could potentially have an opening there to do what they wanna do without that bylaw applying. Right, so this is why I'm saying, this is why I lean towards let's, finish what we started, anything, anything we're unhappy with, leave out for right now, but let's get the bulk of this put in front of the town and then the select, select board. And, you know, because they could get busy, it could sit on their desk for six months. And then we're, you know, we're just, I could just see this dragging out way too long, but, you know, again, my opinion and I guess we should vote on it and move along. Well, the, the only decision is whether to have me draft a ready for public hearing version for your next meeting. And then if you bless that, we'll set the hearing in two weeks, you know, probably have it in March. Right. Yeah. I, I didn't mean we were like having a, you know, official vote. We we're having a no, no, we're deciding no, no. as a group to move this thing forward yeah, rather than to decide as a group and 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 maybe even come up with a list of what you want to see in that draft. Yeah. Or decide to hold or decide to hold the whole thing until everything's ready, which would be you know sometime this summer. Yep. All right. So we got any agreement on getting that draft put together everybody gets a look at it when they see it on an email and notations back to Ron before our next meeting. What's going to be, what are you talking about for this draft? What's going to be included? Everything we reviewed other than the firewood verbiage, which isn't done and a couple other little things that weren't finished, but we went through the whole book at the last meeting and there was a there was pretty much consensus that you know okay 11.2 is good 17.3 is okay you know the things we were changing some of them like we said some of them have to be changed because of uh federal rules and some some of them just because it's bad language a lot of it was easy stuff um anyway that's where i'm at I need to hear from you guys. I, I'm in favor of moving it forward and getting the draft going. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I recognize you, yeah. Chris. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that as well. Moving forward, we'll, uh, we'll have one more chance, Eric, to review it at the next meeting. But, but yeah, that's the point. We got another meeting. We'll review what Ron comes up with. And if he has chance to get it out a few days early, gives everyone a chance to look it over, you know? Yeah. No, no pressure, Ron, no pressure. <laughs> right on. As far as Mary's comments on the gravel pit, she was gonna prepare something. She said there was a couple of simple changes and then something could get more involved um, with between, you know, now and the next meeting, if we, if we see what our simple changes are um, and possibly consider those. And, and then maybe look at the other changes when we look at the, uh, you know, the rest of the, uh, the zoning changes for encouraging development, you know, six months from now. Yeah, that sounds that sounds reasonable. Um, I think what you're going to find when you dig into gravel pits, and I didn't mean mm -hmm. that as a pun, that there's a lot a lot hidden underneath that gravel. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. state rules. You know, wetland water things i mean we can have a rule but i bet you 10 to 1 the state is in charge so 
but let's see what Mary comes up with. And, you know, obviously the DRB was seeing some problems in dealing with the, um, the pit on Garfield road, making, making their job harder. I mean, they've had to have a lot of, they put a lot of time in on that from what I've been seeing in emails, you know? So anyway, so anything else on, on this? Is technically the Green River one was the only thing really on the agenda. Um, we, we do have some minutes to deal with um, October. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <clears throat> so Bob, <clears throat> Bob, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you. Yep. Thank you everyone. Okay. Yep. Um, let me know how I can help. All right, great, Milford, thank you. Thanks, You're Milford. Yep. yep. You're welcome, Chris. So the October 11th meeting, um, Vicki and Chris were virtual. Uh, Eric, Brian, and Richard and myself were present. Um, anybody have a problem with what they see in those minutes? I move we accept. This is Vicki. Uh, we get a second on that. I'll second that. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so the next one is um, November 11th. Um, Eric. Eric was present, Brian, Richard, and Chris, and myself. Does that give us a how many do we need, Ron, for to vote on this? I thought it was that. I thought it was just virtual. No. Yeah. What was that? I, I thought oh, it was oh, virtual. You were sorry. sorry. Okay. There you go. Don't, it was Chris yeah. who was. It was Chris who was <laughs> absent. Okay. Yeah. All right. We have. A, we we've got a. We we're we're good to vote on it. Any any questions on it? That was a quick meeting. Seven oh one. If we hurry, we can beat that. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, do I have a um, motion to accept those mi minutes? So moved. Okay, a second. Second. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So any other any other business that's real business tonight? Well, I will just I will just speak to um, Leslie. Yeah, I don't think it's here. Leslie, <laughs> she will hard, ask you hard questions, which is good, and she will not. But she is the housing. She's a realtor. Mm -hmm. and she has that knowledge. I mean, she will not. And I love this about her. She will not be easy but she will ask the good questions. Yeah, well, um, yep. since we're not sure what you're doing next year, we definitely need a woman on the- on There the you board. go. <laughs> Just don't tell me she's gonna be your secretary because she I can tell you where she's gonna tell you to stick it, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Leslie, you're signing on? Oh, did you know you were signing on to be the chairperson? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right out of the gate. <laughs> so yeah, well, good. Thank you for that. I have I have met her obviously because I know all the realtors. Right. And, right. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but um, or shall I say, I used to know them all. Now I'm no longer doing inspections. Are you retired from that, Bob? Uh, I've retired to be a to back to doing contracting because there are oh. no houses to sell, Vicky. I know. I know. And. And I literally, the last 13 inspections that I did, virtually every one of them should be burned down. Yep. Yeah. And I really hate giving people that bad of news, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm saying no to them. I'm, I'm like busy till September with carpentry at this point, you know? <laughs> so anyway, enough, on, enough for me. Anybody got a, else got anything? So how about a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> <laughs> how about a second? <laughs> second. 
everybody's in favor, I know. So uh, see you next month. Good night, everyone. Cool. Thank night. you, Bob. Take yeah, care. Good night, guys. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>